and we wanted to uh, share that with you because it gives you a, a better feel for what are the stages. Uh, if you have data, um, you put that data um, through robotics into spreadsheets, which covers one spreadsheet is covering all the tax risks on wages tax. Another spreadsheet is covering all the risks on corporate income, or another spreadsheet is covering all the customs uh, risks you carry. Uh, that's B. Uh, then the, the next phase, as we illustrated last week as well, what will be to clean up this data. And clean data in this definition is not the definition of a finance or an IT person, but clean data here is data you would like to take, take with you if you go to courts. It's the only, so if you have an end company service charge from Holland to Italy, and the, the 100 um, is is your your data set, you want to make sure that the 100 is indeed then a tax deductible item in, in Italy. And that's the only data you want to go with uh, to, to the courts. And if anything in that whole data from source to report it has been corrupted and chose a different number, only 80, for example, then uh, you, you, you're you not carrying clean data anymore. Uh, so so this is the uh, exercise where also uncertain tax, posi uh, uh, uncertain tax uh, positions, uh, UTPs, Let's see, that's a mistake, UT, uncertain tax positions and tax provision is um, is a um, the spreadsheet separately run. So you want all the data sets to be uh, fully clean, and then you want to set them up against a standard. The standard could be a piece of legislation which says, okay, um, arm's length principle is applicable, cost plus seems to be the appropriate one, and, and the standards uh, of practice Best practices is cost plus five is the right way to treat this cost of the service. Then that's your standard, and the, the deviation from the standard. If the cost were charged at a hundred, then you know, okay, it should have been a hundred and five, maybe, uh, and that's then your delta. Uh, the delta needs to be um, tax relevant and needs to go through a certain materiality threshold to land in a dashboard where the dashboard is visualizing different variables to different stakeholders, um, preferably in a visual way. So they don't need to understand the very complex uh, dealings you, uh, you, you have to um, address uh, when you're not a tax person. So if you... Um, if you see this, then you see that uh, the whole robotics, uh, robotic process automation is a fairly automated process. You need the data from the systems to the spreadsheets. That's almost like pushing a data point, a debit credit transaction forward to your tax books, uh, to your tax spreadsheets. The minute you start uh, approaching um, the the E and the F and the G categories, uh, there's also a risk element involved. Uh, whatever you reported on that transaction, the 100 um, or the 120 in, uh, after the end of, of uh, period adjustment should be honored by other stakeholders, uh, tax authorities. And if it's not honored, there's always a probability assessment. Uh, what is the other risk? You need, upon full disclosure of this position, the tax authorities might come up with a totally different number. If they come up with a totally different number, what does that mean? Um, well, it means that, for example, your ETR, you're reporting to different stakeholders here. Um, typically, if, if the nominal tax in your headquarter country is 25, um, then your ETR, your effective tax rate might be 27. Uh, that's because there's always going to be some tax leakages on withholding tax you cannot credit uh, throughout the chain. So let's assume 27. 
So CFO might say, okay, 25 is nominal in my country, 27, that's, that's a little bit high, but still acceptable um, compared to the nominal rate in a country because also CFO knows this, there will be certain leakages. Or the, the, the CFO of this company says, well, give me the 27 and I wanna compare it to my peer group. Who are the other companies in my industry and what is their ETR? Because that's, that tells me something about my competitiveness so then suddenly the dashboard uh, is, is a measurement of risk, but not from a tax risk, but from a commercial risk. Am I competitive enough uh, in, uh, in the scene I'm working in? So th that's sort of what the dashboard is doing. Well, if that is what the dashboard should be displaying, obviously you need data, not only from the A to F uh, sources, but also from public domain sources. The minute you start doing that, you can do trend analysis. And you, you can blow up the data from not only your own internally generated data, but also external data sources. And, and, and it could become a big data pool which you feed into an, an, an engine, uh, an AI engine, which does trend analysis. And based on that trend analysis, visualizes the simple picture to the CFO, this is your 25, this is your 27, or it's 27 compared to peer group, which is 23 to 29. Huh? That's sort of the intelligent um, trend analysis you want the AI to generate. And I'm just giving you a simple example to understand that you can also think of much more complex examples. This, this first part, the robotics is what a lot of corporates are doing already. Uh, second part where they really not only use internal data, but they use data from the outside world and put an AI engine on top of that to do an interpretation of trends, uh, maybe even multiple years, uh, is less likely to happen right now. But a lot of corporates are in need of that. Uh, and I'll tell you in a minute why. Uh, so this this is sort of where tech technology on the left side is more mechanical. You can run a base case where you say, okay, I, I'm using the same robotics to do just just do mechanically the calculations of my dashboard. But ultimately, the dashboards to make them smarter need to reflect the human brain, and therefore need an AI tool and be fed with big data to run the engine. Again, uh, the, the big data is the gasoline and the AI is the engine in your car. So if you don't have enough oil being put in your car, it doesn't run either. So AI is useless. You don't have the data pool uh, which you can put in the car. And then such a tool becomes a very, very sophisticated tool because suddenly it feeds very mechanically data into spreadsheets, but the minute it starts leaving, um, it's calculating the delta and probabilities kick in because of data analytics and data pools from outside the company, it becomes a more sophisticated uh, approach to tax, uh, your tax risk register with some degree of, uh, of automation around it. Then uh, what, what Mary and, and me did is uh, at for A to, uh, up to including G, we added all sorts of questions, which is on the next uh, slide. So if you talk to your clients, client wants to know, okay, do you have a dashboard for tax risk management? You say, okay, this is the dashboard, but really we want you to answer the following questions. Uh, on A, what is the governance on data? Uh, who, who is the supplier of data? Uh, and so on. So you have different uh, questions you can raise with the, your, your clients about data and data analytics and data treatment, the data management, whatever phrase you call it, uh, to get to the heart of the matter. How good is the quality of the data for the purpose uh, of, of paying tax? That's in essence what this whole process uh, is about. Um, and then G, obviously you have different stakeholders 
tax authorities are also a stakeholder in, the, in this dashboard. Huh? Because they, they basically also want to um, have, will also be fed with this data in more and more cases real time. If you look at the next slide, it sort of says uh, more beyond this, this, uh, this, this concept, the regulatory and liability uh, aspects. So is there an attorney privilege um, in place? Uh, is it really required to do full disclosure? A lot of companies are not convinced on that. Um, what, what are the C liability, the C suite liabilities uh, on a on a case like tax six, for example? Uh, and what is the governance on uh, enterprise risk management and tax risk management? And are those two systems actually talking to each other? Because if they're not, there's already another SOX or governance uh, discrepancy you need to deal with. 